Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Desk Chick Show. Thank you very much for coming. We're really excited. We have Rachel Zeldin here from I'm Sorry to Hear. We've all heard this so many times, and Rachel kind of brings us the bigger, broader picture of, of what everyone has to go through, has to plan for, has to face at some point in their life with someone that they love. But few people are. So that's what Patty Burgess and myself, Missy Lynn, are here doing with the Death Chicks. We're bringing the topic of death, death grief, and loss, and, and we're putting it on the kitchen table to talk about. We're chewing it. We're, we're savoring each flavor that it brings. We're looking at it from all angles. This, is, this isn't a one-meal deal. This is the dessert, the appetizer. This is a, a fancy restaurant where all things death and dying are, are put on the table and opened up and and this is this is what it's about At pre show we were laughing and I was doing a little bit of cheerleading for Rachel because her and Patty and I have the same vision and yeah and like years from now we're gonna look back and say remember how people used to think about death and you know so we really want to bring some light to the topic and we we fully understand that when we lose someone well yeah it hurts it, it really does and and that's its own journey is to experience the depths of those feelings and in no way are we undermining that but we are opening it up to to richer part of human experience that's to be cherished and valued and, and thought about and planned for and and let's we got we gotta do it so let's have fun with it. So I'm gonna pass it over to Patty who's gonna introduce you uh, a little bit about Rachel before we dive in. Thanks Misty. And you know what? Uh, anywhere there is a metaphor for food and I had never before now heard death is like dessert. It's like we're going to chew on it. I mean, I'm in. Like if there's food there, I'm in. So I was in anyway, but now we've been a big in a bigger way. So uh, yes, thanks you guys for um, for uh, tuning in today. We have uh, Rachel Selden, who you can see, uh, and Rachel is sort of an unlikely funeral planner because Rachel is young and uh, she's got a lot of ideas and a lot of really neat things going on when it comes to funeral planning, end of life, and we're going to talk about it. Let me give Rachel, I'm going to give you a proper introduction. Um, so Rachel Zeldin is the founder and the CEO of I'm Sorry to Hear, which is a website focused on improving the consumer experience in funeral and end of life planning. And uh, she mentions that she's uh, the, le or the, the site's the leader in death tech, the death tech movement. Who knew there was such a thing as a death tech movement? But uh, everything is going online, and why not this as well, right? So that we can make sure that we break down barriers, uh, get funeral consumers and funeral vendors together, and um, really bringing more information to this uh, this whole area of funeral planning. So. In uh, October of 2012, I'm sorry to hear, was launched in a three-state market and very quickly has, uh, you're at about 25 states now, I know, and about 14,000 uh, funeral homes. So uh, the whole idea is to really expand this nationally and get people thinking differently about funeral planning. So Rachel says she's a self-proclaimed consumer advocate. She works passionately on behalf of I'm Sorry to Hear, which is a great name, by the way. I'm sorry to hear. I'm sorry to hear. How many times have we said that? I'm sorry to hear. I'm sorry yeah. to hear. Um, so she works with, you know, the, the whole goal of this is to provide equal access and information on funeral planning and encouraging um, us sharing our personal experiences, what we, which is what we do in this forum. She's a frequent speaker on the topic. Um, she's written a lot of articles. She's also the host of uh, hostess of uh, Death Cafe Philadelphia. Uh, I've been there. It's a wonderful gathering, as you know, if you've heard about Death Cafe. And also um, is a um, co-founder of a newly uh, formed funeral advocacy group called Funeral Consumers Alliance of Greater Philadelphia. So with that, Rachel, welcome. Wow. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Thank you. <laughs> it is. We're so glad to he to have you, and, and as, as Misty and I were talking about, we were kind of laughing beforehand, and Misty's vision which now is kind of my vision. Instead of um, instead of going to the grave site very solemnly with you know flowers in hand and and uh, standing over the grave, she's picturing piano players, cafes, little Starbucks going on, all sorts of things happening. So 
Uh, I know that's a long way off, and it's a very interesting vision that I'm, I'm with you, Mist. I'm with you. Um, tell us a little bit about how you got started. Why, I'm sorry to hear, great name. Um, how did this get going? Well, first off, thank you for having me. It's fantastic to be here with you guys. I, As much as you love my name, I love the Death Chicks. It's <laughs> so appropriate, and um, I think it's really important to have some female presence in this area and to draw light to this topic and give it a different tone than what we're used to when we approach the funeral industry. So, you know, like, two thumbs up for doing this, guys. It's fantastic, and I can't wait to watch all your past ones and your future um, I guess these are webcasts, but uh, I, it's my honor to be here, so thank you so much. Hey, look at this. Oh, you're getting a nice call. <laughs> Somebody is. Somebody is. Um, so, yeah, so my journey here um, was kind of a, an accidental way to doing, I'm sorry to hear. Um, so my, my, in my previous life, I worked in finance, and I, you know, I went to business school, and I wanted to get a great job working for a big company and travel the world, and I got to achieve all of that. But at some point in um, that career path, I, I felt a personal uh, need to get more fulfillment from the work that I was doing and the impact I was having on my community, and I wasn't really sure what that was. But uh, around that same time when these questions were really haunting me, you know, day after day, my great uncle passed away. And um, he is someone that was, you know, I didn't get to know very well throughout my whole life, but he was a really special person in our whole family's life. He was the cool cat, the black sheep, the one that went out and really lived life to its fullest. But when he died, he also, you know, didn't have any assets. He didn't have any plans in place, and it made it very difficult for my family to figure out what do we do with Uncle Rafe. And so that was the first time in my life that we as a family had actually planned a funeral in a very long time. And it was through that um, arrangement for Uncle Rafe that I recognized how difficult it was for consumers to not only access basic information, and I'm talking about like, who are the funeral homes? Where are they? What do they offer? What does it cost? Like, really basic information we couldn't get. So, isn't isn't that amazing? Odd. Like in other words, they you know there's you know there's the funeral home you see that you pass that's down the street all the time, or there's uh, when you're thinking about planning this. What, what were some of the questions that you thought you, or information that you needed that you weren't getting? Well, first off, you know my uncle Rafe, he didn't die in New Jersey where a lot of his family was. He was out west. So okay. the first thing we had to figure out was, well, how do we get Uncle Rafe home? And then what do we do once he's home? And we were obviously on a budget, like many families. We didn't have a lot of money to spend on this event. Um, we had to figure out how we can have a, you know, a goodbye for him that you know, reflected his life but didn't break the bank. Uh -huh. um, so one of our biggest challenges, like I said, was literally just figuring out who are the funeral homes over in Ewing Township in Trenton, New Jersey, that could offer us funeral services. And what we discovered was just... There was, there was dozens of them, but there wasn't any information. So to get to that information about, hi, how much does a funeral service cost with you? We actually had to call or visit each one of them. That's and a lot of time and energy when you're in the middle of this grief process, too. Exactly. The time component and the emotional taxation that we got out of that process, literally having to recount the story of his death ten times, oh. was too much. And for me, as um, you know, as a, as a generation that I've pretty much grown up with technology, and I don't buy a, a shirt online without checking out what everyone else says about the shirt. Does it feel good? Is it the right size? Is it true to fit? You know, I also am a consumer of information, and so I recognize that in this area, in this particular life cycle event, there was no way for us to effectively get information about planning a funeral, whether that was like. What does that mean to plan a funeral? What's the difference between burial and cremation? How much does it cost? And why does it differ from funeral home to funeral home? There was just nothing out there to help us kind of navigate through this the sea of funeral homes. And for me, it, it kind of left a sour taste in my mouth that, you know, I didn't know whether we were doing the right thing. I didn't know whether we were getting a good deal. And yeah. um, at the end of the day, it just took too long to do it. And I envisioned... You know, I envisioned a day that, you know, I could sit in my pajamas at midnight finding and doing this exact thing in minutes rather than hours. 
Wow. And that was really my catalyst that says, why isn't this being done, and how do I do this? Because if it was, you know, we're, our, our family is just one of millions that experience this every year. So how can we improve this process for everybody um, so that we feel more informed about what we're doing, we feel like we are educated about our options, and that ultimately we can make better decisions. And sometimes that means spending less, and sometimes that doesn't, but at least we know what we're spending our money on. And that was a big deal for me. That's huge. That's huge. And I, I think what's so interesting about it is that I would expect, and maybe you can speak to this, that these funeral homes for, for so long have been shrouded in sort of, I don't want to say secrecy, but it's like, you know, not many people are going to stop into the funeral home. It's not like you're going to the supermarket on a regular basis so that you know sort of what the services are. And given the fact that they're sort of shrouded, um, and and they, I don't get that they had really reached out much to a consumer base at all. Um, maybe you know Green Lawn um, funeral, you know commercial on television, but that was a little creepy with the music behind. So I, I sense that like what a great idea, and also the fact that you're kind of pushing them into this new millennium to start looking at their services and delivering them differently. Was that a challenge to talk with funeral homes? It's an ongoing challenge, as you can imagine. Yeah. Um, because like you said, they there is a, a kind of a, a vow of secrecy within the industry, but I don't know if it's um, meant to be that way or if it just is that way, because they haven't had a good way of communicating that to the public. And, and up until, you know, and up until the last couple of decades, the internet, you know, like, okay, we have a website, you know, but now, you know, like, still probably maybe 60% of the funeral homes have websites, and the websites that are there are so generic and so uninformative that it, it's not really helpful. So how do we encourage them to disclose the information that we really want? Um, mm -hmm. And for them, you know, there's a threat. Imagine, like, this is your livelihood, this is your profession, you're the keeper of information, and now someone wants to come and take that information and tell the world. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. put some transparency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was a, an industry that was not is not traditionally transparent. Yeah, and, and it's tough because you know, for me, transparency is a good thing. For them, it's not because now they're not the only subject matter experts. Um, but it's also difficult for them because they rely on their relationships, and they feel that if people are getting consuming this information on an electronic format, that they might not be able to build those relationships. But my argument mm -hmm. is that even if people are coming through my site and they're finding you, they're going to be in a better position to have a good discussion with you about what they want. There's going to be less education involved. There's going to be less questions. You're going to be able to actually build your relationship with them rather than focusing on the really basic things that we should be able to get to anyway. Yeah, makes total sense. I can see it from both sides. I like, like anything else, it's a, a new venture, a new... Um, foray out there into this world of, uh, in the world in general, but death and dying, which is kind of already shrouded in like, ooh, let's not talk about it. Yeah. You've got some challenges really picked out for you, that's for sure. Yeah, but I mean, with these days, I think the statistics are like 80% of Americans are online, and like 75% consult the internet before making a purchase. So to, to, to not have this information online is just it's it's beyond me why it's not already out there. Um, and so overcoming some of those challenges and, and helping, you know, benefit not only the industry and bringing them into the ages, but also helping the consumer feel more comfortable about this particular event is something that I really am obviously very passionate about. I, I, I feel like um, if we could solve this problem, it can make it a totally different and more positive planning experience for many of us who are doing this at the last minute or unexpectedly or even just help us prepare for our own, you know, our own end, which will happen to all of us at some point. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Wow, I'm it's all such a fascinating array. My my experience with with working with people around death is more of the the healing and the inward journey to to overcome their their big feelings. But 
I'm wondering with this aspect of it, what are you dealing with? You just mentioned the consumers. Are you dealing with the consumers, and what's their reaction to it? And and uh, are you? What's your? Is your? Do you feel like your fingers a bit on the pulse, or are things changing? I can you speak to that a bit about uh, the consumers using the technology? Yeah, just at, well, your your interaction with the consumers. Which is maybe open has maybe opened up a bit since you began this journey, and I'm I'm not sure how much. It sounds like you're quite um, in involvement with the cons funeral home directors, but I'm wondering about the consumers and if you notice any change happening with them or what what how do they what, how do they approach this and what's how are they receiving this? Well, I have two kinds of like empirical evidence. So the first is just me being me and going out and talking to people about you know like who I am and what I do. And the react and the reaction I get from consumers is like, wow, this doesn't exist. Like this is definitely what I would want to plan. Like I get that all the time. People are baffled that like this hasn't you know you know we don't have a trip advisor of funeral planning or a wedding wire of funeral planning yet. Like it's just people are shocked that. Um, this topic in particular doesn't have a, a way to better organize. So um, that's always, you know, enforcing for me that, you know, I'm onto something that consumers want. But aside from that, you know, I, I literally have thousands and thousands of people coming to my website every month because they're looking for this information. They are going on Google and Bing and Yahoo and saying how to plan a funeral funeral home checklist, funeral home reviews, they're getting to me through those searches. And I think that's another testament to the fact that people are seeking this information and now we're still you know, a pretty young company so we're only reaching a fraction of those that are actually um, searching for it. You know, but once, once we build the brand and we build our presence more you know, nationally or throughout North America, I feel like it's going to be a no-brainer. It's like, oh, I want to know about my family history. I'll go to Legacy.com. Oh, I'm gonna go plan my wedding. I'm going to the knot. I'm going to wedding wire, right? And it's gonna be like there's gonna be a point where people are gonna be like, oh, there's an impending death, or I've been having thoughts about end of life and what I want. Where do I go and organize these? And it's gonna be, I'm sorry to hear. So I get evidence from both ways that, from a consumer's perspective, this is desired and also needed. That is so wonderful. And you know, when I when I first came into this business too, it was like. That was my vision. It was to have the a website. It would be the go-to for all things death, dying, grief, and loss. Because I thought there's, you know, so few things out there. Wouldn't it be easy? Like you're wondering about this, so you just go to this one site, and everything is there. So I love it, and it's it makes it so much easier for people in need. And we have the internet now, and it's it's just mm -hmm. fabulous. So I, I'm I love love the idea. Love the ease of access to information. Um, I, I'm going to see if I can share this comment. Um, let's see. I'm not sure if it's going to. Oh, there. Is that working? So Donna Belk, she talks about. Um, she's talking about the uh, home funeral, and she says that uh, some people choose not to use a funeral home, and the family friends take care of after death care, and this is called a home funeral, and it's a growing movement. And then she gives the um, the website. Thanks so much for that, Donna. And I'm wondering if you are, you know, branching off into not only funerals traditionally, but but the home funeral movement, which um, sounds like a wonderful a wonderful thing that's going on these days. That is such a great comment, and thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, there is, uh, there are, you know, quite a few trends in funerals that are worthwhile to mention here. And home funerals is probably at the top, where we don't talk. We we historically um, never called it a home funeral because it was just the way that we took care of our own. Um, and then somewhere along history in the early 1900s it became industrialized and we started pushing that all the way to these professionals who were trained to work with our dead. So really the home funeral movement is uh, a return to the days of old when we did take care of our own. You know, So we took care of them while they were sick and then we took care of them while they were dead and we did it as a community. And it's a it's a really cool movement and the Home Funeral Alliance is a great organization to get um, information from on this topic. They actually have a whole list of home funeral guides 
who are there to help people in the community navigate a home funeral if they so desire. Um, and they can, almost like a personal coach, they could do it in person, they could do it over the phone, they could tell you, okay, well, you know, when, first do this, and then do this, and then you can do this, this, and this, and it, you know, kind of helping you through the process if it's your first time. And it's such, it's such a beautiful thing to do um, as like the last thing that you could do for someone uh, selflessly. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. similarly, this home funeral movement um, has existed in many other cultures. Like if you look at the Muslim and the Jewish culture, they actually still have maintained this pra practice. Um, like the Hevra Kadisha in Judaism is the, the, the secret funeral group that goes and they consider it the greatest honor to watch for and care for the dead until the burial. Um, but the home funerals 